We've created a reinforcement learning environment in Unity that we can control from Python. Now let's add a reinforcement learning engine on the Python side. If you're new to this series, you can find the earlier videos in the description. And there's also a link to the Unity project and the Python scripts where we start from here. We're going to take the Unity environment, wrap that in a gym environment, then feed that gym environment into a stale baseline 3 PPO trainer. Let's first install the relevant library. So in our Python environment, first we're going to upgrade pip and wheel. So I already did this, so it'll be fast. And then uh, you need to do stable baselines three. Uh, you don't need any extras that will bring down everything that you need, including torch and so on. And that will also install gym for you. Let's create a gym environment that's going to wrap our Unity environment. So let's copy and paste the step.py and we're going to call that myEnv. And this is going to contain a class called myEnv that's going to wrap the gym environment. So we need to, from gym, import env. And then we can create a class down here that we're going to, we can call myEnv. And that can import from env. And this needs to have three methods. It needs to have an init method. Well, it doesn't need that, but we will need to have that. And we need to have a step. And we need to have a reset. And we'll fill these in in a sec. All right, now if we mouse over this, uh, we can see that the step takes in an action. This will be an integer for our purposes, or that it can be a NumPy array of integers. Um, and it needs to return a tuple of observation, reward, done, and info. So let's have an action. You know what, I'm going to mark it as an ND array uh, of N MPU in eight. Although when we do the M checker, it's actually going to pass us an integer. Uh, so let's do uh, from numpy.typing import nd array and this and, uh, and also we need to do import numpy as mp and then this is going to return a tuple and the tuple is the things that we just looked at so it's going to have an observation so the observation is also an nd array but this is of type mp.float32 the reward is a float the finished is a boolean and then we've got this info dictionary uh, like if we mouse over this, we've got info dictionary. And this is a dictionary of str. I think we can do this because I'm using Python 3.10. And then this should be any. Uh, let's import the any from typing. Right now it's complaining that the line is too long. So let's create a setup.cfg and we'll create a flake section. And we're going to put like max line length equal 120. And that should remove the line length issue. There we go. Right now it's saying that we're missing a return statement. So yeah, we should look at that in a sec. Um, the reset is going to return an observation, which is also going to be an MP ND array. And that's also going to be a float 32. Right now in the init, we have to declare two things. We have to declare an action space. So this is the actions that we want stable baseline three to send into this env object. We will convert that into the actions that we send to the Unity environment. And we also need to define the observation space, which is how the observation is going to look when we give it to stable baseline three. Now stable baseline three expects a NumPy array for its observation. So that's why we're providing the NumPy array here. And we'll need to take our observation, which we're receiving as a my vector three and convert that into a NumPy array. All right, now for this action space, we have four possible actions. We've got north, south, east, and west. So the action space here is going to be of type discrete. We need to import from Jim, we need to import spaces. And then here we can do spaces.discrete. And then we need to give the number of possible actions, which is four. What this means is that in this action here, stable baseline three is going to feed us an inch of like zero, one, two, or three, like up to, up to one less than four. And then the observation space. So we are getting a my vector three from Unity environment. We need to convert that into a NumPy array. So let's just convert that into a NumPy array of length three with float 32. So here is going to be a box. Now the box has, we have to give a low, a high, a shape, and I usually give a D type. The low and the high is the minimum and maximum values that will be in that observation. I looked through the stable baseline 3 code and it looks like it doesn't ever use these values unless we're giving an image, in which case it checks is low 0 and is high 255, but we're not using an image. So we can just set these to anything we like. So let's just set the low to minus mp.inf 
and the high to plus mp.m so that it's a valid value. And then the shape, so we're converting a my vector 3 into a numpy array, so it's just going to be a length 3. We could actually make it length 2 because the y is always going to be 0, so we could simply not pass in the y, but I'm just going to do length 3 just because I don't know, I feel like it. And then the detail, I'm going to put uh, mp.float32. All right, so now we define our action space and our observation space. So now in our step, the action is going to be a number. It's going to be an integer from 0, 1, 2, or 3. We need to convert that into a string because we're passing strings like north, south, east, and west. So we can do action str equal. And then here we can make a list. So we can do north, uh, south, east, or west. And then we're just going to index this list based on the action that we're receiving. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to call into the Unity environment. So we need the Unity environment. So in our constructor, we need to receive the Unity comms. So we'll have a Unity comms here. And we'll just save that into the self. So self.unitycoms equal Unity comms. So what this means is now in the step, we can call the Unity comms. So here we can do um, self.unitycoms.step because that's the, that's the method we created, the RPC method. And here we can do action equal action str. Now we want to convert the result. We want to get Chile to convert the result into an RL result. So we're going to do result class equal and then RL result. And RL result is defined here. So we can then save this to an RL, a variable called RL result, which is a type RL result. All right, so now what's going wrong with this? Right, yeah. Okay, we need to do an equal sign. All right, so now what we can do is we're going to return. So we need to return an observation. I'm just going to put three dots for now. We need to return. So if we look here, observation reward done at an info. So the reward is from the RL result. We can just do RL result dot reward, which we got from the Unity environment. The finished, the done is the finite value of finished. And then we need this info dictionary. Let's do the info dictionary now. So info. It's simply a dictionary. Now we can just return an empty dictionary, but stable baseline three can monitor the average episode length and average episode reward if we provide a, a key here called finished and the value of that is equal to RL result dot finished. This lets us wrap a monitor around our environment in a set. We'll see that in a set. All right. So we've got the info, we've got the reward, we've got the finished. And then now we need to look into the observation. We also need to return an observation from the reset. Since we would need to return it from both places, let's just create a method that's going to handle this. So let's call this method like underscore obs. And so we're getting a, a vector three or a my vector three, and let's convert that to MP. So the input to this is going to be a vec three. It's going to be a type my vector three, and the result is going to be an ND array of uh, containing float thirty two. Now. All we, all we need to do, very simply, create an ND array. And so this vec3, it's got like dot .x and dot .y and dot, dot .z. So we can simply create the ND array like this. We don't have to provide the y because it's always going to be 0. I just feel like it. Uh, one thing that we should do is we provide a D type. If we don't do provide a D type, it's going to default to float64. And we said that the observation is going to be of type float32. All right, so we put in the D type MP float 32, and that should match. Right now, in our reset, all we need to do here is return, of, well, we need to get hold of the observation, right? So observec3, and that's of type my vector 3 is, and then here we can call into our Unity environment, so we can call reset, and we want to give the result class, so the result class is my vector 3. So now we can do return self dot underscore OBS vec3 to MP and then pass in that vec3. Cool. All right. So we've done the reset and then we're going to do the same thing for the step. Here we're going to return our observation, uh, except that here we're going to get for the obs vec3, we're going to do RL result dot obs and then the RL result is the my vector 3. All right. So this is probably implementation of the environment, but let's run it through the environment checker. Stable baseline three has an environment checker, so we can import that from stable baseline three dot common dot m checker import check m, right? And then what we can do is we can run this down here. So we've already got an arg parse, but we can get rid of the action 
uh, we're don't, not going to do that. So we've got we've got the Unity comms. Then we can instantiate our environment. So my env equal my env and pass in the Unity comms. And then we can run the check env passing in env equal my env. Right, we should be able to run that. Now we need to have the Unity environment running when we run this, but I'll just tr show that that's, that's the case. Uh, so if I do um, my env, it's going to say it can't connect, it's failing to connect. All we need to do is simply start the Unity environment, which is here. All right, so it started okay, no issues. And then if we run that again, it should uh, connect to the Unity environment and that, that passed, so that's fine. All right, so we've created our gym environment and it's passed the uh, check env provided by the stable base lens three. So the next step is to create a PPO engine and then and then learn. So let's do that. Uh, what's that red thing? I think that's fine. All right, so I'm just going to copy and paste step py again, and this time I'm going to call it train rl. And what we're going to do here is we're going to import the my env, or maybe from my env import my env, let's say. And we need to import the PPO. So from stable baselines three dot PPO dot PPO import PPO. So then going down here, so we can delete this action because not going to need that. We'll delete this. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a PPO object. So PPO equal PPO, and then here we need to provide a policy. So we can describe the policy using a string of MLP policy, and this is a policy that's provided with the stable baseline three it's basically a, a small stack of linear layers it's a relatively simple neural network since our input is relatively simple our output is very simple this will work totally fine uh, so we provide mlp policy there's also like cnn policy and in, in various custom environments you can create your own uh torch network or whatever uh, we need to provide the env so we'll do env equal my env and then there's some other parameters we can write. We can accept most of these defaults. I'm going to put verbose equal one. And then I like, I like to have some entropy regularization. Uh, it helps to explore. So I'm going to say that's 0 0.1, which is pretty high. Now, usually you do like 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001. But in this case, I'm going to put 0 0.1, pretty high. And then we just need to call learn. And then here we need to say how many time steps you want to learn for. So let's say 1 million. We're not going to go anywhere near that. We're going to go up to like, well, a lot less than that. Uh, what's all these red things? Right, so I need to create our environment, right? My env equal my env, and then we're going to pass in the Unity comms. And then one thing we want to do is we want to wrap a, a, a monitor around this, which is going to handle of uh, determining the average episode length and the average episode reward. So what we're going to do is so we're going to go up here and from stable baselines, we need to import that monitor. So from stable baselines three dot common uh, dot monitor import monitor. Okay. And then here what we're going to do is we're going to do my env equal monitor my env. Now that should be it. Right, in a couple of lines, we've instantiated the stable baseline 3 PPO engine, so that's cool. Uh, we will do one other thing, which is we'll make the episodes finish if they last too long. But let's just run this first and check that it's running OK. All right, so this is already, the, the Unity is already running. And so I can just go like train RL, and that hopefully will run. OK, so it's running. Now what we're seeing, it, will, it seems we got lucky, right? Because by chance it sort of touched the red thing. No, we didn't get lucky. It got stuck, right? So what we need to do is, oh no, we did get lucky. Yeah, so it solved it. But if we do this a few times, sometimes it will get stuck and it will just stay in the corner forever and ever. So what we need to do to solve that uh, is simply make the episode timeout. So let's change the environment so that if the episode lasts more than a thousand steps, then it's just going to finish the episode. So to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the agent.cs, which is basically our game controller, essentially. And next to the finished, I'm going to add another variable called step. And we're going to reset this to zero in our reset. So next to the finished equal false, I'm going to put step equals zero. And then each time we take a step here, I'm going to increment the step by one. And then very simply, if the step is more than a thousand, then we're going to log that we timed out timed out ending episode 
and we'll set finished true true. All right, so that's going to make it time out after a thousand steps, and that will encourage it to explore. It will succeed in exploring now. So let's restart this, and then we'll start the training. So running the train RL, and then so it looks like we probably got lucky this time. Like sometimes you get lucky, and it, it never it never needs to time out. Uh, sometimes you run it and it will get stuck. Uh, but by making it time out, then you depend less on, less on luck. Like it will just always find a way. I guess we could restart that and maybe it'll time out this time. So that seems kind of semi stuck. Yeah, yeah, it timed out. All right. Uh, but like once it's touched the red box a couple of times, then it's totally fine. Um, and then what else do we have? So we got some statistics over here. Uh, so we've got the the episode length mean. This is how the average episode length, which is 570 at the moment. Well, actually 817. And then this this is going to reduce over time. This, this is timed out a bunch of times, so this is a pretty unlucky run. Um, but eventually it's going to learn because each time it times out, we start a new episode with things in a random different place. And so after a while, it, it starts figuring out, okay, I have to chase the red thing. And so now the episode length is still pretty high now, but this is gradually going to go down with time. Uh, we've also got the average reward. So this is less than one at the moment because of all the timeouts, uh, but that will gradually go up to one. And then we've also got this thing called FPS 182. So what's FPS? So FPS doesn't refer to the monitor frame rate. It's not the Unity update rate. It's not the Unity fixed rate, fixed update rate. The FPS is how many decisions is the reinforcement learning engine making a second? How many times are we calling step per second? So 181, I think, is decent. It's OK, especially because I'm running on a MacBook Air. Um, we can make that higher by doing things like running multiple Unity instances, since Unity is very single threaded. So we can run multiple Unity instances. We'll increase the frames per second. Stable Baseline 3 provides a sub-processing environment that we can use to wrap multiple Unity instances. I'll probably make a video later showing how to do that. And we can also run on a on a, like a cloud instance, like an AWS or a Google Cloud or whatever. I, I might make a video showing how to do that too. And uh, yeah, so now the episode length has gone down to 16. So it's basically learned. So there we go. So if you've been following along, so you've now created a uh, You've now trained a reinforcement learning algorithm that runs against the Unity environment. Cool. How are you here? What are you doing? Here? You trained me to chase red cubes. Do you remember? Oh no.